And welcome to episode two of Illustrator for Noobs. And today we're going to talk about the workspace and the black and white arrows. So first of all, when you open Illustrator, you've just got this black space. You need to open a new document. So you go to File, New. You will notice on the right hand side of a lot of these in the drop downs um, that they've got keyboard shortcuts. The keyboard shortcuts in my case are all for Mac because I am a Mac user and if you're on a poopy PC just change it for control instead of the squiggly command. So in this case it's command N or control N and you've got the pop-up here which is for your new document. I don't bother putting a name, you don't need to. The artboard that you will create you can always change later as you're working so it really doesn't matter what you do. I generally start off with a square. If you did a rectangle put in your measurements and then do your orientation according to what you like. I always work in pixels, that's a much better way to work. The only thing I do do is change the colour mode from CMYK to RGB. CMYK, just like your printer, is for printing and RGB, just like your monitor, is for web and for anything that appears on a monitor. So ignore that bit, just hit OK or enter and you've got your artboard. Um, with the artboard you can either go, you can make it bigger or smaller as in zoom in or out, not bigger or smaller, zoom in or out using the command and plus or control and plus or minus. Um, and then what you do with this as well is that it's not actually, with Illustrator, you're not constrained to working within the artboard um, area. You can actually draw on any other bits all around there, which is quite handy because quite often you're doing your main design in this section and then you do some little ideas on the right which you can just bring in or keep some bits just for reference. Um, quite often with things like fonts, I tend to keep a copy of it in its original state so that I can remember it if I need to refer back to it. So I tend to use this area as a little note-taking area or experiment area. Um, so this is my workspace. This is how I like my workspace to be. Um, you can customize it according to how you want to. It just so happens this is my particular preference. I like to have the tools on the right hand side um, collapse so that I've got a bit more working space but you can actually click on the double arrows and have them all open but collapsed really does give me a lot more space to work with. Um, all of these you can just click on the icons for the various tools that you need and then just click on the double arrows to collapse them again. You can bring out certain tools that you want from the space just by clicking onto it and then expanding it and then you've got your layers palette which you can move wherever you want or any other tool that you decide otherwise you can pop them back in. Um, in order to make them stick to the rest of them you can see it goes transparent with a blue edge and then it just pops in and it becomes one unit that you can move around if you want to. Um, on this side my personal preference is to keep um, certain tools open so because I just use them a lot, the, the swatches and gradients, all these, and you know, um, Pathfinder and so on, all these I keep them on the left side open together with the default tools here. Um, with these, you'll see on the bottom right corner of some of these has a tiny, tiny little arrow, um, sorry, triangle. And that means that there are some other tools underneath. So if you clicked on it, you will see it's got a little drop down and you can select the tools within the tools that you want. Otherwise, if you're going to be using them a lot, it's worth pulling them out. So what you do is you hold on to it and then you let go on where the little arrow is on the right, which is the tear away bit. And then you've got your tools here. So if you're doing, in this case, a lot of pen work, you might decide to keep these here and then move it around according to what you're doing. Otherwise, just click on the X, it goes back to where it was, and you see, it's back to how it was at the beginning. All these tools, you can get them from the drop-down 
on window. So now we've got that in terms of the workspace, let's move on to the black arrow and the white arrow or the proper names being the direct selection tool for the white one and the selection tool for the black one. Um, these ones you will notice with a lot of these tools there are keyboard shortcuts in brackets on the right hand side. So in the black arrow it's the V and the white arrow is A. I really urge you to remember these and learn them and use them with your all your design work because the more complex your work is, the more easy it is for you to be able to swap between them using the keyboard shortcuts. I didn't do that at the beginning and I really wish I did. I Actually, I must confess, I only just started remembering these very, very, very recently and it's made such a big difference. Can you imagine doing a really complex thing and always having to go over there, oh, back there, change, change, it's just VA, VA all the time, fantastic. So please learn them. So. With the black arrow and white arrow, let's just start off with a shape. So I, I'll do a star, fill it in with the orangey yellow. With a black arrow or the selection tool, you'll be manipulating or, or moving the whole shape. Or if it's in a group, and don't worry, groups will go into in another episode, um, you'll be able to move the entire group or the shape that's selected. These you can change by either stretching it vertically and you can see if you hover over the middle square it's got an up and down arrow so you can stretch it or shrink it vertically or sideways on this side so it's the sideways arrows or you can do the whole shape and then it's quite free flowing whichever way you want to do it um, just by holding on to the by left clicking and holding on and just moving your mouse around. Um, one thing you can do is, that's a way of doing it just freehand, but if you wanted to do it where it's in the exact same proportion of this star, for example, but you just want it bigger or smaller, as you're stretching or shrinking it, hold down the shift button and then you can see it's actually the same proportion, just bigger or smaller, and then just let go when you reach the size that you want. The other thing you can do is if you were to stretch it, hold down the shift button and the alt button at the same time, you can see it expands or shrinks the shape from the center and that would apply to groups as well. And this might be handy if you're doing concentric shapes. So, you know, you've got two options of expanding and shrinking um, depending on what you want. So with the alt key pressed down or with just the, the shift key held down. So that's that for the black arrow or the selection tool. If you were to use the white arrow, that's the direct selection tool. That way is where you manipulate certain parts of a shape or a certain shape within a group. So if this was in a group, you can move this without the rest of it being affected. But the other thing you can do is you can move hold down onto one of the anchor points and you can move it around whichever way you want. Um, if you wanted to move more than one, you just click onto that, hold shift down, click onto the other anchor point, and then whichever one you hold onto, you can just move them and manipulate them that way. If you wanted to do, the other way you can do it is to actually just draw a little marquee that selects them both and then you can move it that way as well. If you wanted to move um, them in a lot more, in tinier increments, you can do that. Let's say, let's just choose this one. Um, you can use your arrow keys. This you can barely see, I'm sure, but I'm going, I'm pressing sideways. They're very, very tiny increments and it's very handy if you're doing tiny, tiny adjustments. Otherwise, you can hold on to shift and then move your arrow keys up and down. And that you can see. They're just making the increments bigger. Or just singly, just to make it very, very accurate. So those are ways where you can use your black and white arrow or your 
selection tool or direct selection tool. I hope you found this episode helpful. If there are any questions, please put them in the comments below. And, you know, I'm quite happy to make a separate episode if something needs explaining in a lot more detail. I welcome discussion, so please, let's get chatting. And thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Peace and love. Bye.